Hello, Melanie Durkin here and welcome to the Todd Durkin Impact Show. Today I am hosting the show and Todd is my guest. I get to toast him, roast him and talk about him and I am so excited for this. Um, the most common question I get from people who know Todd is this. Is he always so energetic, crazy and motivating? I have been getting this question for like 20 years. Literally, I think everybody that I meet personally will ask, ask me this question at some point. Um, I always feel like there's a few different ways that I could answer it. Um, but usually it is uh, a big yes. He is genuinely positive, he's motivating, he's super hardworking. Um, but I'm not gonna lie, I wish that he had some of those qualities around our house, that same motivation to do some household errands and work in the yard and get some stuff done. But I'm just joking, that's kind of, that, that's not Todd. That is, that is not Todd. If you know Todd, that's not what fires him up. He doesn't love that stuff like I do. He's, um, he's, he's not a home, home projects kind of motivated guy on the weekends. <laughs> um, looking back to a few years ago, it is amazing how literally everything changed in 2020. Fitness Quest 10 got shut down. I remember that day perfectly, like it was yesterday. Um, his Get Your Mind Right book came out and basically nobody's mind was right in like the entire world it felt like. He had his second knee replacement and we sold a big portion of Fitness Quest 10. Um, it was just so many things in 2020 and we thought it couldn't get any worse than that. Um, but it lasted for three and a half years and honestly just kept getting worse and worse. So there were so many things that happened in that time span and looking back, it just, it feels kind of like a dream. It feels surreal. Um, what was it that got him from a 10 out of 10 on the pain scale to about a three as of today and with no surgery? And that is another question I get all the time from people who know us well. Um, I was just with my aunt just this weekend and she was like, tell me, what, what was it that Todd did to get out of pain? How did Todd get out of pain? And it's, it's hard to answer. It's hard to, um, it's hard to figure out. He did so many things to get out of pain. Um, he, he, there was obviously it was, it was uh, many things that helped him to get out of pain. Um, but that's why my best answer for people when they ask me that is we got a book, we got true strength is out and the whole story is there. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing and it's pretty exciting. Um, I'm super excited for True, St True Strength to come out. I think reading it was one of the most emotional experiences for me recently. I, I read the book in two days. I was on the editing team, so I had kind of, I had this deadline. I needed to read it. I needed to get my edits back to Clay and the publishing team. And I'm, so I'm trying to do it quickly and efficiently. It's, it's honestly taking a whole weekend, a Saturday and a Sunday for me to sit down and read it. But it's also like this like incredibly emotional journey that I'm on, just reliving and also seeing it from like Todd's perspective, knowing that I had a perspective too because I had gone through all of that. Um, it was definitely a dark and scary time um, nothing I'd want to go back to again. I believe um, True Strength will, will really reveal a lot of the factors that contributed to Todd getting out of pain and finding the light at the end of that dark tunnel. Um, I feel like this book is going to be there for people who are in the middle of a diagnosis or in the middle of pain and in the middle of that place that they don't want to be in. They just can't figure out the end of the road. Um, true strength is something I am so proud of. I'm so proud of Todd putting it together and being vulnerable enough to share all of the, the dark, kind of ugly details of it. It's easy to talk about all the good and positive and better energetic, motivating things that he's usually kind of 
you know, stays in that lane, but this, this was different. And, um, but I always knew that it was important. It was important for him to share it and it was important for him to just be, you know, super transparent about it. So it's here and we are excited to share it with everybody. Um, I am so honored to be part of the book and, um, part of these podcasts, we're going to do two of them together. I am going to interview Todd and he is going to interview me. And um, we are going to get started soon. So let's do this. You ready to go? You talking about me? <laughs> Was that me? <laughs> we were going to do it. Was that me? That was, that was you. <laughs> well, hey, th thank you for the introduction. Um, it doesn't sound like me. It's like a different person um, on that. So uh, thank you. And it is awesome to be here. I feel like it's another, another time that... Um, that you're, you're explaining this guy who I don't know, even though I know, <laughs> but it, it's really good. I'm really excited. Uh, the book as, as this podcast drops on June 17th, the book comes out tomorrow on June 18th. And I couldn't be more proud. Um, mm, this book was written in seven months, uh, with a great team of people, including my man, Clay Manley, who I'll have coming on the podcast in a couple weeks. Um, it was an all in effort. Um, you were a big part of it, Melanie. Thank you. Not just writing the book, but this whole the saga of so many changes. And the book is written for anyone who is struggling, who's being challenged right now, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, on any level. Um, if I went to a traditional publisher, it would have come out in two and a half years. And I said, I can't wait two and a half years for this book to come out. It's gotta come out now. And um, it's as quick as a book has ever come out. I thank Scripter Publishing for getting it out so quick. Kelly Watson and Greg Justice for making this thing happen because we literally just finished the manuscript about six weeks ago and the magic they've created to get this book out on June 18th um, with so much going on is a miracle. But we don't want another person to die um, from pain, suicide, mental health. I am proud. I know we are both proud that a portion of the proceeds of this book are going toward uh, suicide prevention and mental health. You'll hear more about that in the book. Why? Um, but it's a crazy story, and I'm really honored um, to get the book out. Absolutely. So, um, what are you most nervous about? Are you? Do you have? <laughs> uh, are you? Are you more excited, or are you more nervous? about your story coming up. I'm more excited than I am nervous because I'm trying to block out all this stuff that happened because <laughs> I'm like looking at a character like did that really happen to me? But I, I do feel that in a lot of ways now looking back that God used me to get me to where he wanted me to go. Um, and with all that is going on now, it will be easy for people to say, oh man, Todd's got all this momentum happening. All these crazy things are happening. Yeah, it was three and a half years of hell going through this time to really get him to get me to where he wanted me to go. Am I nervous? Yes. Um, because anyone who's followed this podcast closely, many of you have listened to pretty much every episode. Matter of fact, I'd love if anyone's listened to every episode, all 363 me, episodes. There's <laughs> Julie. Julie and Melanie. <laughs> Julie has. We do it. Right? You, um, is, uh, you've heard bits and pieces. But when you put the story all together and hear even deeper of the story, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of surreal. I am nervous about that, but I realize this. I had a series um, last year called the Reinvention Series. I didn't want to share that either. But what I realized is the number of people who reached out to me after the Reinvention Series was astronomical. I'm like, man, people just want to hear real. And this is unequivocally, the, the, it's not going to get more authentic and genuine than this. And uh, my man Dave Sider says, everyone's got something. Everyone's got something. And um, you're going to hear three and a half years of something. There was a lot of something going on for me. I couldn't be more excited for now. But looking back, it's kind of crazy to look back and think, man, that's a lot of stuff for anyone to go through. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Do you have a favorite part of the book <laughs> I, I don't know it's this is it's <laughs> the ending <laughs> the, ending. the, the ending, ending is my favorite the ending I um agree. I, I I am I really do the ending is my favorite because I wouldn't want to walk through that again but uh, the ending is guys we, we have so much going on now the book is coming out again tomorrow as this pod drops on the 18th I do believe that the world's going to be impacted in a positive way we have the impact summit coming out next month um, I'm going to invite everyone if you're listening to this podcast um, to be in L LA Los Angeles July 11th to the 14th it is going to be the most positive 
uh, uplifting uh, event that you can possibly go to. If you got a lot going on, go to it. If you don't have a lot going on, go to it. All I'm going to say is be in the room. Um, the theme is be iconic, to be iconic in your own life. Um, people keep saying, well, Todd, what are you talking about? Because 2020, 2020 to 2023, you created a lot of stuff. Yeah, I sure did. But behind all that stuff was I was just serving my wounds. I was trying to help myself and I did produce a lot of stuff, but no one really knew all of the why behind that. So if you're someone today who you, maybe maybe things are you're at a high high or a low of lows, be in the room. That's all I'm gonna say with that. And then of course, you know what we recently announced we've got the franchise, the Impact X performance franchise launching. Um, there's a lot of good things happening now, and all of it is because of the three and a half years of pain on all levels that, that we went through. So this book is a, covers a span of three and a half years, yep. 2020 to 2023, into 2023. So in that time, we had the pandemic. We had Fitness Quest 10 closing down mm -hmm. for, my God, two years or something. <laughs> uh, there was that crazy death threat with when we had the Get Your Mind Right book launching or book signing. That was insane. Um, the gym closed again. <laughs> it just kept closing. Yeah, opening and closing, <laughs> opening and closing. closing. Can we get it someone just, like, that knows what the heck is going on or just open it up? But <laughs> um, a second knee replacement mm -hmm. and then another, actually a third. Remember you had that other knee Clean surgery. Clean up, had to get it cleaned up. All that scar tissue. Yep. So another knee surgery. Um, then sold off a big portion of the business, brought in Jeff. Um, then the back, oh my gosh, the back, the back was so out of the blue and so, 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 so scary. Made all that other stuff look like nothing. Um, and then the back was not the last thing. It was that scary brain fog. You thought you had CTE. I thought you had CTE. I didn't think you did. I thought you had CTE. <laughs> I was freaking out. I got you an appointment with Dr. Amen. I was like, oh my God, how, how, how is this not ending? Um, and then you got your sleep apnea diagnosis. That was, that was, that was really crazy. Of all of those things, that, that was a lot. That's a lot in three and a half years. Which one was the most, you have to pick one. You're asking me to grade that. No, no, I am. You have to pick one. You have to, which one was the most impactful for you? Mm -hmm. You can kind of, depends on how you define impactful I, at yeah, this moment. I, 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 which it, one? It's hard, it's, you know, gosh, they all go, I, I, it's hard to grade which one is most impactful. The one that hurt the most was the back. It was a year of, mm. Mm-hmm. That was the most intense for sure. Yeah. That was like life flashing in front of me because I was on a mission to change the world and save gyms and save my gym and save everyone. And I felt so called to do that. And then my back just literally just, it, I've never felt pain like that, physical pain in my life like that. And I felt a lot of pain, five concussions, the back injury that, that injured, it ended my football career when I was 25. Um, uh, just that pain just leveled me and when you're in physical pain and I've known this I preached it for years when you're in physical pain it also creates mental anguish and the mental anguish I didn't show I train all my athletes I train all my clients I had a back brace on I'm popping whatever I get my hands on ibuprofen Vicodin you name what it was that, I could find uh, it anti-inflammatory you were like you really we tried to get in Mexico that, yeah, it was like, what, Volterran? Is it Volterran? Was it Volterran? Well, Volterran, yeah, you can get over Is the counter. Not, not, you can know <laughs> the but wait, there was, there was, was well, there was, some, there was, well, there was one anti-inflammatory yeah. that really seemed to work v for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I was but all freaked out that about that. Medical, but I didn't. When you're in pain, you'll, you'll try to fool your wife, you'll try to fuel anybody. Um, because it mentally is the hardest part and you don't always admit how bad it is because it was always worse than I ever admitted to Melanie or anyone else because you, know, you just you do what you do. Um, but deep down, it was a scary time. Um, and I never knew how I was going to get out of it because here I am, you know, thinking that I have CTE. You're telling me I have CTE and I know I, I'm like, I know I do, but I'm not going to admit it even though I don't have it now knowing that. Um, well, it's also, you had gone through so much. I mean, I'm going to brag on you for just a moment. 
you were going through all of that in that time and you're doing the good news network like literally every single day you're getting on it what was that noon and yep. you had like a 20 30 minute sometimes 60 minute um you just talking <laughs> about good news when all of this stuff is going on and i mean that's just you that's what you do but you know i gotta which, say like the good news probably helpful. the good 100 the yeah. good news network kept me alive yeah seriously. <laughs> like it'd be 11 59 and I'd be like, I have nothing good to say. <laughs> what am I going to say? No and then I, there's, there's like, one. guys, the good news, there's no good news. Oh. And um, I'd go on. I'd see someone's name pop up. And I'd get a smile. And I'd just start spouting off and spewing. I don't even know where it was coming from. But I'd have good news somehow. Um, but in, in a lot of ways, like, hey, Todd, thanks so much for giving me the hope and the life. And I'm like, you know, thank you. Yeah. The Good News Network, 91 straight days of going live seven days a week, that kept me alive. It really did. It kept me alive. I was doing that as much for me as everyone listening in. And there was a lot of people. I think I need to bring the Good News Network back now that I'm kind of like mentally stable. <laughs> but there was a lot. It'll, it'll be um, even more. And just, I, I could touch on it later, but... Um, the whole summation of all this, it ended with the sleep apnea diagnosis because on top of all this stuff that was going on, I wasn't sleeping. I could only sleep on my left side in a fetal position. I couldn't, I couldn't lie on my back. I couldn't lie on my stomach. I couldn't lie on my right side. I could only lie fetal position, left side. And oh, if I and moved, I was in stabbing. I had to put the pillow oh between my, my knees and I mean, I wasn't sleeping very long. So I would wake up. The first thing I think of is I can't wait to go back to sleep tonight. But what do you do? You get up, you work out somehow, if you can, um, you, you, it, you try to go for a walk if you can. There was about close to a year I couldn't do any of that. And you're just trying to do something. And I tried everything. And you know, again, we can go into it. I go into it in the book. Um, all of the different things I did, tried. Two countries I went to for stem cells. Um, you name it, I did it. Um, but I, And I share again a lot of the strategies in the book. But uh, that sleep apnea diagnosis, when you say it was, was the one that was kind of like the... The back was the worst. The sleep apnea, I'll say, is, quote, the best because the sleep apnea finally... I actually was grateful that I got diagnosed with sleep apnea because oh, yeah. I thought I was going to It was a die. reason why. One thing about you is you're not, you're not a depressive guy. You're, you've never been like a depressive guy, which is something I love about you. Um, you genuinely are positive and optimistic and will just... You'll push through um, even when you're not feeling great. But... Would you say when you were going through the the pain, the back pain, the frustrating COVID shutdowns and all of that, do you feel like you had a little bit of depression? Where do you think you were with that? <laughs> You're trying to get me to admit no, all that. <laughs> I, I, I'm not really sure if that's what it, I mean. Obviously, you're I not think happy there was. What's going on. I think um, there were several negative emotions I felt. I never admitted them during the time because I was trying to fight my battle to get my own mind right. Fear was one of them. The yeah. scarcity mindset was another. Like the scarcity mindset, I was battling. I'm one that I am not someone that is uh, comes from the scarcity mindset. Well, but what do you mean by scarcity? Scarcity mindset is for this pr situation. Protect everything. Like don't don't grow during this time. Protect. Like I was during this the back thing. I was trying to like protect my nest because. Everything was caving in around me, and um, the scarcity mindset was like I wasn't looking to conquer the world necessarily yeah, smaller, during this time. Smaller, right. right, so it was, uh, and I'm not a scarcity mindset person, but I could feel that battle and the fear. When it comes to like depression, I remember a couple times you saying, maybe you need to see a counselor, and in my head I'd be like, mm, I probably should. <laughs> Yeah. You know, like I probably you didn't should. didn't do any antidepressants. That was one medication. No, and I'll tell you what, do. I'll tell you what, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Looking back, I probably should have seen at least one <laughs> because okay. I should have listened to you more because I know that I battled and I did everything humanly possible um, physiologically with supplements and trying to move, but I couldn't move. That if, if, if you were to go back, I, there was certainly a, a time that I was depressed. I couldn't exercise. I couldn't work the way I wanted to work. I was so frustrated with the world and the hate and the, the stuff that I was seeing that it was depressing. Yeah. It literally was depressing. And no one could understand my thought process. And I couldn't just come out and say really what I wanted to say on everything. Um and all along, I was in so much pain facing a 14-hour back surgery that I didn't want to have. And I'm like, 
Right. Is there my like, like, life over? Like, is my is is no, this it? Out on it. Right. And to me, when you say, you know, were you depressed? Yeah, I think I was depressed. I'd never have been depressed in my life. I don't. I, I don't pretend to say I was like in a uh -huh. depressed where I was suicidal. I didn't think that's kind of stuff, but. I certainly wasn't in, in a typical, you know, mindset. I, I was battling as hard as I've ever battled before. Right. What was that peptide you started taking? BP-157. Oh, my gosh. That that gave you a BP-157. I know. I can, <laughs> I can say. That was a spark for you. I felt like when you started to incorporate that, I mean, granted, you were doing tons of supplements, but I felt like when you started to incorporate that, there was like, there was, there was, it, things started to shift. There was a little bit of a change in the amount of pain. Um, I mean, what do you think? Looking back on that, what do you think of all the things that you were doing? What contributed to mm. the term? If you had to do you know, one or two of the many. Obviously, I did one you're going to talk about all of I them. I did in one the book. of the podcasts. I forget what number we can dig back. I, did, I shared my entire routine, and maybe we'll put it in the show notes. I shared everything I was doing, and it was a laundry list of things I was doing. Well, and you um, shared in the book. The, you do share it. In yeah, the but not to the like yeah. one of the pockets. I shared yeah. every little yeah. thing, um, as far as my back is concerned, on that. But I don't think I, I wouldn't say, hey, it was the BP one fifty seven, or heck, I started to use. I couldn't work out. When I say I couldn't work out, guys, when I say I was sleeping on my left side with the fetal position, I couldn't sit on a bench and hold 10 pound dumbbells and do anything because I was in so much pain. I couldn't walk to the mailbox with Jersey, so Jersey's ticked off at me. My wife is pissed off at me. Everyone's ticked off at me, right? Because I can't do anything. And um, to me, biceps, um, I, think, I feel like you were I, doing I got BF, I, I literally got <laughs> the BFR bands um, yeah, from yeah. Amber. She sent them to right. me and I started using them incognito for six months because I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, well if I can try to elicit the same physiological and hormonal responses as if I was doing a great workout. I could do it for six months. I was kind of in the backyard doing these little bear crawls, five yards forward, five yards backward. And I was taking like little light weights and trying to like just do little movements to kind of, or I, at that point, I just wanted to get my mind right. You were just trying to move. Yeah. I was just trying to move a little bit to try to like get my mind, get the juices flowing. Um, on that. So I wouldn't just say it was one thing. I think there was a combination of things that um, were all part of the quote healing process per se. Oh, absolutely. I, I saw you in those BFR bands this morning. You're still using those. I, you ain't bands. kidding. <laughs> I was in <laughs> lower body, upper body. Uh, and by the way, I just ordered the BP 157 again. <laughs> good, good. When it works, keep doing it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, we talked about all the bad things in 2020, 2021, 2022. Oh my gosh, it just, there was, there was a lot of, a lot of negative. Um, but our oldest son did graduate high school in 2021, and that was exciting and happy, and he got a scholarship, playing, playing college football, living his dream, moving to North Carolina. So that was all, that was all good, and that was a high. Um, but it was hard for you to participate in all of it. And um, I remember talking you into a graduation trip to Mexico. We're, we're not a big Mexico family, if we're gonna be real honest. We don't go down to Mexico a lot and stuff. So you were sort of like, eh. Didn't really like the idea of Mexico anyway, but I encouraged you to do it his whole little best friend circle was going. And um, that was tough. That was a tough trip for you. Do you, what was, what was the, what well, was the best part of well, Mexico? It, well, what was the best part of Mexico? It, it Let's wasn't start that, with that. It, listen, it wasn't that I didn't want to go on vacation or I didn't want to go to Mexico. I love when I'm actually in Mexico on vacation. I just didn't want to go on that specific trip. Well, you were in um, a lot of pain. You I was in a ton of pain. Of listen, pain. The, this 2021 was the worst of the worst of the worst of all of it. And it was in the middle of this that you were convincing me that I would be a bad dad if no, I didn't go I didn't with, say, with I think the I family. I said, I don't go by myself. Right? I'm going. Yeah. We would like you to come. And I felt like a big loser dad. You're invited. So, um, I'm invited <laughs> to the family trip, but um, the truth is I was in the worst pain I've ever been in during this time, and um, I can't say there were any highlights about Mexico, yeah. uh, I, that trip. There was nothing good about Mexico in that I do trip. remember you on the beach, 
um, walking up and down the beach and like doing your little videos and stuff. So you you were kind of you were you were better in the mornings. The, actually, the joke was you were you were nowhere to be found and in, in, in five in the morning. <laughs> but I wasn't five sleeping. in the morning, you were out and you were you were enjoying the morning uh, on the on the coast. But um, that that was tough. And and you do write in about this trip in was, the book and you do talk yeah. about I was journaling a lot because I was in the height of my pain yeah no one else knew the pain that I was in I had back braces on I was popping stuff that fortunately um, that in Mexico I would I never just have admit to say, this I just have to say thank God yeah, I know where you're going it was before this fentanyl crisis yeah. that yeah. we're in right now stop the, the, the uh, say fentanyl I, that's I, the only thing to say I can't even think about what you were going to those pharmacies on the corner asking for yeah. I mean, you were asking for anti-inflammatories, weren't you? Yes. Like you were. So, but, yeah, correct. That's really and, scary. And yeah, but when you're in pain, you'll do anything. Yeah. And that's yeah. where I was at. I needed a lot of... I was in a bad place. Mm -hmm. And again, I've been told I needed a surgery, which we could talk about as well. Um, but it was in that point, um, just a few weeks previous, that when I was when I, we had that dark moment seeing the back deformity specialist, when I was in Mexico that one evening, 2.36 in the morning, I woke up. And I felt the most excruciating back pain I've ever felt in my life. I felt like there was someone sticking a, a, a sword in my back. I remember crawling to the bathroom, feeling so nauseous. Um, I crawled in, there was tile on the floor, and I remember just crawling on the tile. And I'm curled up in a ball and I'm crying, literally, of the pain, the physical pain. You that wanted I felt. to go to the hospital. I and pleaded. I was like, oh. I pleaded. You heard me crying. Oh, I, I pleaded, know. like, take me to the hospital. You're like, we know. can't go to the hospital. Why? We're in Mexico. I'm like, take know. me to the Maybe ER. I don't yeah. care. Get, shoot me up with something. I'll get surgery. Yeah. I don't care. And we had an argument on the floor in Mexico. And fortunately, you won that argument. Yeah. Um, I'm because like, I wasn't seeing uh, uh, surgery in Mexico. <laughs> I saw it. And I was ready for it. I really was ready for it. I didn't care where I was. I just knew I was in so much pain, and somehow that was one of the lowest points of my of my entire um, uh, just essence of of all of it. Because um, man, it was it was a very very tough time. Um, I've never felt pain like that, and I've never um, it, that and the the trip to well, the doctor were the two lowest points of all of this. Again, I go into depth. And, so I was going to ask you. So the the low of the lows, Mexico's got to be on that. Physically, yes. And that horrific doctor's appointment. Mentally, the other one, the doctor appointment. Mentally, is the I've never felt. Yeah, that was an awful doctor's appointment. Yeah. The they reason, were shocked to see you. I remember feeling like. They thought they were going to see like a 75 year old man. Yeah, they were like, wait, who are you? You're, wait, you're Todd Durkin? And they had looked at your scans and your, your, your x rays, your images, and they just couldn't put together you looking, standing, and being the way you were with what they expected. So, in a, yeah. In a nutshell, essentially, that back deformity specialist. Uh, shared with me that day that I needed a 14-hour back surgery. It was a fusion, a full fusion, and that my life would never be the same. I'd have to take a year off. I wouldn't be working. I couldn't travel. And I'm just seeing my life flash before me because, again, I'm still in, like, save the world mode here. Even though I was in pain, I'm still, like, the only thing I'm doing is trying to serve people because it was helping me. And now I'm being told, you can't do any of this. Your life will never be the same. And my life is literally flashing before me. The thing I'll always remember about that was we were out in the car after this uh, appointment that changed my life because I remember I was in the passenger seat because I couldn't drive. You were driving, and I literally just started bawling my eyes out. Um, mm. I don't go there much because that was a really painful time now, mentally. We will not of, say his name. No. That doctor was the worst. He had the worst <laughs> bedside manner. He was like a Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> we don't need to like, talk oh, about it. Oh, I'm going to do all this. I'm going right, to We don't need to we don't need to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. We don't need to talk about it. We don't talk about that. It was that. a horrible doctor's appointment. Let's not talk about okay, that yeah. because that's negative. And what that's what true. what ultimately was I knew that wasn't my guy. Yeah, that's um, for sure. and I knew that if I was going to get cut on it wasn't by that guy. And um, what I'll say is I remember for five minutes just spouting out all of the pity on me thing until you finally said, time out. What if this isn't about you? 
what if this is God's plan and it's not going to be 10 million people you're going to impact. Maybe it's going to be 100 million people and maybe it's not just trainers and coaches. Maybe it's going to be people from all walks of life, people who are suicidal, people who people are depressed and physically hurt. And I wanted to hear nothing of it. And yeah, I wanted to hear, to hear nothing. Deep down, I knew you were right, but I just mm -hmm. couldn't admit it. <laughs> that was such a hard head. You had but, that conversation in the car, and then we had another conversation like that in your office at home. And, I, yeah. and you were a little more, like you were listening yeah. just a little bit more. Share in the book the depths of that conversation and something that happened in there that um, it was one of my epiphanies during that and why I'm grateful that you were by my side the entire time because that was one time that if I was by myself I was not in a good place I was not in a good place being told when your mission is to save 10 million people in that and now I'm being told I can't do any of that I was really questioning like how like how do I keep going like how do I keep doing this and you got my mind right when I needed to get my mind right because that was a really, really dark time. So between Mexico and that yeah. doctor's trip, those were some those bad were times. <laughs> those were some those dark were lows. Lives. Yep. But you also, you've always had great people. You've always surrounded yourself with amazing people, friends and family mm. and obviously us. And, and you had some really key people that stepped in and got you some other doctor's appointments. Yep. Stepped their doctor, yep. Dr. Jeremiah. Big time. Big time. That was a huge doctor's appointment that you went and saw mm. that doctor and he gave you hope. And we and things started, we needed, we needed the medical community, that traditional yep. neurosurgeon yep. kind of, you know, guy in our life, but we needed it to be the right one. Mm -hmm. And the first one was not the right one. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that, that was key. Um, so, jumping ahead, mm. talk to me about Dr. Amen and your thoughts. We've, we've followed him. Do you remember when we saw him at IDEA? He was a keynote yep. speaker many, oh my goodness, decades ago. I feel like that was like 15 years ago or something. And we first got introduced to him. Mm -hmm. And um, our friend, Pastor Miles McPherson, is, has, yeah. um, knows him well and, and has, has yeah. worked with him and stuff. So, um, that that part of the journey when you were still trying to figure out why do you not feel well dr amen is the world's foremost Good. leading expert in brain health you were convinced i had cte and i'm convincing you that i don't I'm trying to talk you out of i don't despite having five concussions in my football career diagnosed anyway um and i was five days away from going to see dr amen at we i think it was a two-day intensive kind yeah. of a thing and it was really in depth all this testing and I was a little concerned like man but it was also at the same time that I went down I didn't want to go it's like you know it's kind of like the impact summit like I I, I, I it's like when you someone wants to go to something but you have every excuse why not to go to something I had an event in Nashville Tennessee with a small group of entrepreneurs I really didn't want to go I didn't have time to go I was hurting I ended up going I met Dr. Gabrielle Lyon Dr. Gabrielle Lyon um, long story short, she said, you got, you know, she's like, I read your SWOT analysis on you personally, all this fatigue, exhaustion, burnout, you're feeling the physical pain. She goes, you got sleep apnea. I'm like, sleep apnea. She goes, stick out your tongue. I stick out my tongue. She looks at my ears. She says, what size neck do you have? I told her 17 and a half. And she, and she says, did your wife ever tell you you stopped snoring? Uh, you stopped stop sleeping? Right Can we back up and say that? I told you you had sleep apnea. But you're my wife. I'm not supposed to listen I to you. <laughs> before that. You I did. Know. You did. But guys, I, I didn't amen. We don't I, listen I to our wives. backup from Gabrielle, I guess. <laughs> I know. Dr. <laughs> Melanie uh, did say that, but I didn't listen to her. But uh, when she said, does your wife ever tell you you stop snoring? I said, yeah, she says that, but I'm just trying to be quiet when I'm sleeping. I'm trying to be polite. You oh, know. yeah, right. And she said, no, you have sleep apnea. So she goes, get checked when you go back to San Diego. So I canceled Dr. Amen thinking maybe I have sleep apnea. I got, I got checked and that night I got checked. I stopped breathing 120 times that evening for 20 to 52 seconds, 120 times. And in that time, my blood oxygen levels went from a, to a 70 to a 70, a 75 to a 79 in each of those episodes. So 120 times that went evening. Down. For me, you're supposed to be like in the high 90s. 90, 95 to 98, yeah. Right. So it went to 75 to a 78, 79. So I'm like, wow. She goes, you can't recover. 
that's why you feel so bad. So imagine you go out in your pool, hold a brick over your head for six hours and 10 minutes, that's how long I slept that night, and put a brick over your head and tread water and then get out after six hours and 10 minutes, tell me how you feel. Oh, by the way, while you're treading water for six hours and 10 minutes, stop breathing 120 times for between 20 to 52 seconds um, in that six hours and 10 minutes, then walk out and tell me how you feel. That's what you've been feeling the last few years. I'm like, ah, yeah, that was that's crazy. how I feel. Like, you know I was the mean? first time I was like, that is how I feel. Yeah. It's not just my back. It's not just the business. Right, it's not just, right. it's, I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out. And I'm not sleeping. Not breathing. I'm not breathing. I'm holding, right. my, I'm holding my breath. I'm, I stopped breathing because of this apnea thing, which I'll have to do another, another episode on. But that was I crazy. canceled Dr. Amen. You got your, and it your was the money's first, worth out of that. It was the first time <laughs> I ever <laughs> felt <laughs> I had hope. That, oh my God, maybe I don't have a death sentence because yeah. I, I had so many lows during this time that are all legit. Like everything that happened, the pandemic, the, yeah. the death threats, the, the, all of the, the closures and the back pain and the two knee surgeries and the, the mental fog and all of it, oh. all of it. But I, I must say, you were time. not ever a huge snorer. I think people think in order to have no. a diagnosis of sleep apnea, you have to snore like, you know, you're right. chopping wood. And you never, it was just that you would stop breathing. And I would hear you stop breathing and mm. think like, did he, did he die? Is he going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> just get your hand off the, my <laughs> face and nose, you. Melanie. Like, you, wait, wouldn't, well, you wouldn't touch me. You were putting your hand over my <laughs> nose and mouth so I couldn't breathe. <laughs> no, I was like, wait, he's like not breathing. <laughs> But it was not loud snoring. So anyway, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so out of the entire process of three and a half years, do you have a best part or a hardest or worst part that you want to share? Hardest part, pain, physical pain. I know physical pain. I embrace physical pain. It's okay to be in pain, but it was hard. It was really hard. It was exhausting. Yeah. And the mental fatigue that that caused Listen, we're all trained to fight for a couple weeks, couple months, a year. But three and a half years is a long time. So I'd say that was the worst part. The best part was Montana. <laughs> like, you did find Montana. I found Montana. Wait, when did, what, what year found was it? Was 2021. Drew, Drew told me, Stacy, Stacy came to my life because Drew said, hey, Stacy Smith over in Montana wants to build a resort retreat center and I was like, right. can we go tomorrow? And, <laughs> and I've been there probably eight times. We have another retreat coming up this November in Whitefish. And I love Montana. And we've had some great family trips. Heck, we got one coming up in, what, July this year. A couple of weeks, um, yeah. A couple of weeks. But, like, I found Montana. And That's I true. love Montana. I think there's more time because I was so it seeking retreat. Like, I studied Winston Churchill during this time. And one thing... Mm -hmm. I found that Winston Churchill took a decade off before World War II, a decade off to work with his hands because he was so exhausted and burnt out. I'm like, hmm. wait, Churchill took a decade off? I'm worried about taking a year off? Like, I'm studying Churchill thinking, this was before he became Winston Churchill, everyone knows. So I'm like, maybe this is somehow a blessing. Like, I'm gonna go to Montana and I'm gonna retreat. And that's what we're building now in Montana is our, our own kind of retreat and family retreat cabin. place cabin and and uh, and then honestly like the best part also was was you and our relationship i'm not going to get mushy everyone but um listen it's easy to have things go well when things are going well it's easy to uh have a spouse significant other girlfriend or boyfriend by your side when things are going well but this was the worst of our like relationship that i've ever been and i feel like i've always been the one who's been strong and you know all these Crest of the wave we talk about in the book. This is like the first time that I've been broken, and um, I feel. <laughs> hopefully, you do the same. <laughs> like I feel like we got a lot closer. You're like, no, you owe me. <laughs> but I feel no, like absolutely. we've gotten a lot closer because yeah. of just going through that together. Like you were as much a part of it. We'll talk more about that next week when I have a chance to interview you and grill you like you are right now. Yeah. But um, Montana was awesome. I mean that it still is. I'm I, yeah. I'm looking forward to spending more and more time uh, retreating to get ready for all the sprints coming up as well. Great. So, um, what role did faith play in all of it? Your recovery, you getting through the pain. I mean, making the big decisions. Listen, I'll tell you what. You, you remember this? 
Um, I, I had both Pastor Jeremiah pouring into me and me into him and then Miles McPherson. Those Monday night Bible studies in 2020, 2021, 22 with, you know, all of the couples that we were with, um, they kept me alive. Uh, yeah, they those kept us alive right after in 2020. the pandemic right. happened. And Literally, we were like online and, later, you know, we with those. Miles and yeah. Chad and Andre yeah, yeah. and Tyrell and mm-hmm. all that. And I mean, faith played a huge role in all of it. I remember journaling what Miles was telling us about slow down, slow down. I'm like, if I slow down anymore, I'm going to be flatlined dead. Right, um, right. Well, I remember you having that conversation with Miles where you finally shared with him like how much pain you were in because you 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 could do a Zoom Bible study and not say a word about your pain. You know, it was super doable. And so I remember when you 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 spoke with him about what was really yeah. going on and that was that was pretty intense. Yeah, I think the one thing, you know, there's a scripture verse James 1 2 through 8. And I, I read this thing over and over again, and it's kind of hard. It's kind of a, a mind screw when you think about it. Like, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, um, for that produces uh, perseverance. And I'm like, consider it joy when you face trials? Like, how am I supposed to consider this a joy that I'm facing these trials and tribulations? And I would really contemplate that verse over and over again. I understand now, looking back, it's always 2020. Um, of what it was all about it but produces perseverance and perseverance um, it, this time for me was a time to persevere through a lot of physical and mental pain but I know my faith definitely grew tremendously during this time it's one of the reasons why with the franchise coming out that's why faith is one of our pillars I'm not hiding behind faith is one of our four pillars fitness faith recovery and life coaching um, because you know when things are going good for somebody it could, it's easy to kind of just get soft, I'll mm-hmm. say. But when, when it go and get tough and you're facing what you think might be death or some really, really dark times, your faith heightens. And I spent three and a half years really talking to God at a level that I had never talked to him before because I was living in fear in some ways. I was scared in some ways, but I was also seeking something deeper. The reason why even with Fitness Quest 10, why I, I sold that was because I was seeking another level. It was like there's something deeper that I know yeah, that I'm being called to do. It started yeah. in 17 and 18, before the pandemic. Like I knew there was something deeper that I couldn't get to. And I believe that God, I mean, this is my own personal opinion. My opinion means nothing, <laughs> as Miles would say. Um, is uh, That was God's way that I was broken. I got broken during this time, and that was God's way of forming me and getting me to where he wants me to go, which is now with not only serving Fitness Quest 10 in my role here in Scripps Ranch, San Diego, but with the franchises that we're going to spread this globally and starting with the national level. We already have seven um, locations that are are going um, with Impact X Performance is we're going to grow it. And it's going to be fitness. It's going to be recovery. It's going to be life coaching. It's going to be faith. And to me, it's all part of three and a half years of going through a very hellacious time. Absolutely. So my next question is, what are you most excited for these days? I think I know what that is. Well, I, I think there's, there's three things. The, I'm, I'm excited for the book. I want people to read yeah, the book. Yeah. Uh, I think people, I, I, I'm excited for the book. Yeah. I, 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 I really think that the book, while it is a memoir, it's a memoir about my story. It's really not just about my story. It's about how can people see themselves in the story, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, either when you've been broken, if you're broken now, or when you're going to be broken someday. I have 31 um, uh, lessons, body, mind, and soul, 31 lessons that one can glean. And um, I'm really proud of in, in the time that Clay and I spent so much time on this, the lessons that we share are really deep, and I think it's going to impact people greatly. I, I Back in December 2023, when we prayed here in this room, we're doing this podcast right now, I prayed with Clay that someone's going to read this book who's really in a dark place, who's where I was for three and a half years, someone might, who might be suicidal, someone who might be broken physically or mentally is broken broken. It might be a son or a daughter. It might be a friend. It might be a coworker or a colleague. Someone's going to read this book that's going to save a life or two or ten. Maybe a hundred, maybe a thousand, maybe more. But I know that someone's going to read this book and, and get hope like I had hope in sometimes the darkest of days, whether it was in Mexico, U.S. I talked to a pastor, Jeremiah, Pastor Miles, a friend, 
we pray together, whatever it may be. I believe that this book is going to become a beacon of hope. So I'm really excited about the book. I'm excited about the summit. The Impact Summit in LA is going to be on fire. I can't recommend enough to be in the room in July 11th to the 14th. It, you do not have to be a trainer or a coach. Be in the room. Find a way to be in the room. It's easy to find. Like I should have been in Nashville. Like I didn't want to. I was too much. I was busy. I was in pain. Right. There's always excuses. Ah, oh, it's going to cost me a plane ticket or hotel. Just be in the room. Trust me later. Um, be in the room for the summit. And of course, the franchise. I mean, I haven't been this excited about something in, I don't know, a long time. <laughs> like a long time. It's been a long time since I've been as excited for about what's about to happen um, across the country. Um, and uh, the franchise is, is really excited about um, now helping I can mentor other not only trainers and coaches other business owners and and really hit three four five hundred members in each location times seven times ten times twenty times fifty times a hundred times a thousand and before we know it we're going to reach that hundred million people um, where we're going to be really significantly impacting people on all levels of their life. There's a lot to be excited about. You are you are right. Let's, How about you? How about you? <laughs> I'm, excited. I'm excited about all of it. I am. I'm super excited. Um, let's jump back and talk about the book just for one, I have one more question yep. on, on true strength. Mm. Um, each chapter ends with a body, mind, soul story or mm -hmm. message. Mm -hmm. um, why did you choose to add those elements to the book? And... What are you hoping for well, people listen, to I, I mean, get out of that? Well, look, look the, the, the cover's a lighthouse. The cover's a lighthouse. Why? To, so we can serve more light, shine more light into our communities. So if you're a trainer or coach, keep shining light. If you're someone who works out at a studio or gym, fantastic. Keep shining light into your family, into your schools, and into your work. Like, be a light, be a light, be a light. To me, body, mind, and soul, I mean, we can go all the way back to, you know. Our Pilates <laughs> room uh, in... Right. 2000, that's well, what we I, had I, on yeah, the walls. hundred percent. Like, body, mind, and soul is everything. So it'd only be, it'd only be fitting that if we had a body, mind, soul um, lesson with each chapter so that we have 31 lessons for the body, for the mind, and the soul on that. Because what I want people to do is read the story but see themselves in the story and then have um, a lesson in each one of those areas. So I'm excited for people to not only hear the story, the memoir, but to see yourself in that and say, how can I get some strength of the body, get some strength of the mind, or to uh, have strength of the soul and then go out and do great things with it. Awesome. So the lighthouse, the lighthouse is a big deal right now. The lighthouse is part of your new logo. It always has been Impact a big deal. Impact performance. It's a, it's, the it, lighthouse is on it, the book, on the book cover. Um, it is. It has the lighthouse been, has been a cl my clothes for been. all of my keynotes for over a dozen years. Fitness Quest 10 started. We always talked about being the light, the sanctuary. This is the sanctuary of Fitness Quest 10, and every Impact X performance facility will be the lighthouse. It'll be the mm -hmm. sanctuary. So it's really just bringing the light to the front of be the light. Be the light. Be the light. And I'm, I'm telling whether you work out at a facility, you work out at an Impact X or Fitness Quest 10, just be the light. And if you are a trainer, be the light. If you're a, a, an owner, be the light. Um, we need more light right now in a dark world. Um, with everything going on in the political and economic climate that we're in, I choose not to hang in that, that uh, space. I want to make sure that I'm infusing people's body, mind, and soul with more inspiration than ever before. And you can bet your bottom dollar to the day I die, uh, you're going to be getting even more light. When you look back someday, mm. how do you think true strength mm. fits into all this? How does true strength fit into all this? The book, True Strength, here's, here's what I'm going to say. I know this. This isn't the last um, valley that you and I will ever, go, will ever go through. There'll be more valleys, hopefully more, more uh, peaks. But uh, the book starts out with the, the quote from Pastor Jeremiah, the crest of the wave determines the depth of the valley. The depth of the valley determines the crest of the wave. We all want more crests, um, but we're sometimes sitting in the valley. But the valley is also where the fruit um, grows. None of us want to spend more time in the valleys. What I, what I would answer this by saying is when I look back someday, I'm going to realize when I'm in Montana, I'm looking back, thinking about three and a half years of hell. How the heck did all this happen? Because with the franchise and the growth of the franchise and, and the books and everything that we're doing, um, my hope is that this book saves thousands of lives, literally. Um, all of it was because of going through three and a half years of hell. 
And uh, to me, none of us want to walk through the valley. I don't either, but we did, and it took a, a big effort. My hope is that when you walk through your next valley, um, that you can lean in on this book a little bit, lean in on me, reach out to me, DM me, email me, come find me in Montana or San Diego, wherever I'm going to be around the country, or if I'm speaking at an event, just come hang out in the back of the room, and uh, when I'm all done speaking, come say something to me, because nothing lights me up than when we're live, in person, in a room together. That's what makes the world go round, and thank God we are back doing that again. How do you think true strength fits in all this? I think true strength is life. It, it, we all want higher mountaintops, but ultimately, it's about the ups and the downs, the downs and the ups. And we gotta hopefully spend more time on the ups, but when the valleys come, we gotta open our arms up, embrace it, surround yourself with great people, um, know that there's love in you, and don't ever give up. We're 21 years now with Luke and Brady and now McKenna. We always used to say, we always do our best and we never give up. I can't tell you how many times I said to myself in three and a half years, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, because I think it could have been sometimes easy to say, you know what, I'm giving up, I'm going to go check out, let's go move to Montana and chill out. And Nothing wrong with that, I guess, but I guess if you have a divine calling to serve more, God's sometimes going to break you to get you to where he wants to go versus where you want to go. And that's what I feel is true strength is finding your divine uniqueness and then ultimately living it so that someday you hear that, that calling, well done, good and faithful servant. You sidestraddle, hop to that gate, and you're, you're doing your thing. That's what true strength is all about. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Well, well you definitely have shown true strength, every bit of it. My friends, that's a wrap. Uh, I want to thank Melanie for uh, interviewing me today. Uh, this is part one. Um, next week, I'm going to come back. I'm going to interview her. She was tough on me. Wait till, what do you hear next week's episode? <laughs> but do me a favor. Can you please share this? Um, please share this episode with all of your friends and family. Uh, we want to get this episode out uh, on True Strength. Um, if you have not yet uh, purchased the book, get the book, True Strength. You might want to get five or ten of these and spread them to the folks you work with. Uh, I believe it's not just for people when you're down and you're out. It's for when you're at your if you're at your height or you're looking and seeking something even deeper, you want to get your mojo back, you want to get your energy to the next level, um, is you're going to want to pick up a, a copy of True Strength. Just go to uh, Amazon.com or Todd You can get True Strength. Um, and uh, make sure you, you check that out. Also, don't forget, the Impact Summit is coming up July 11th to the 14th. I encourage you to sign up. Bring a guest, bring a friend, a spouse, significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, bring your son or your daughter. Um, not only am I speaking four times, uh, I've got 12 guest speakers. We've got workouts, we've got networking events, we have podcast row, kind of like the Super Bowl. And it is going to be an awesome, awesome time in Los Angeles, the JW Marriott. Um, this is something that's been on my intention for years and years and years to have, I'll, I'll say, kind of a Tony Robbins type event. Um, and it's not just for fit pros and coaches, although if you're a fit pro or coach, you're going to want to be in the room. It's for any moms or dads, any entrepreneurs, or people who are just trying to get to the next level. This is not just guaranteed for the success folks that like you're successful it's for someone who wants even more success you seek even more significance be in the room for the impact summit um, and I guarantee that you will be um, so happy that you are so thank you so much for joining us uh, for today's true strength episode 363 I want to thank my wife Melanie not just for uh, interviewing and grilling me today on everything but for the last three and a half years uh, she's been by my side and the book is dedicated to her um, because she uh, she's something else. And uh, while we've been married now for 23 years, uh, it was the three and a half year period I went through uh, during this time that we uh, were able to demonstrate true strength. I hope you find your true strength today. Uh, have an incredible week. Thank you for picking up the book, True Strength. Until next week, remember, train hard, eat right, live inspired. Go create an impact. And don't forget, stay strong, baby. <laughs>